Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bismillah walhamdulillah wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man wala wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsanin ila yawmil jazah amma ba'd. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. It's a great blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has brought us to the 25th night of Ramadan. We make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of our efforts throughout the day. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our fasting, our dua, our ibadah, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of our efforts and intentions throughout the night, our dua, our ibadah, our worship, and our prayers. And we make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us during these last 10 nights, allow us to find Laylatul Qadr, and grant us all malfira, forgiveness, grant us all rahmah, mercy, and grant us all najat, salvation, from the punishment in the hereafter during these blessed nights, during this blessed month. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And we make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may he grant afiyah, goodness and health and well-being to the entire ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. In our summary tonight, in Jews number 28th, the unique thing about this entire juice is that all of the surahs in this juice are madani surahs, which means that they were all revealed after the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam made hijrah to Madina Munawwara. So we have Surah Mujadala, Surah number fifty-eight, followed by Surah Hashr, followed by Surah Mumtahina, followed by Surah Saf, followed by Surah Jum'a, followed by Surah Munafiqun, and then Surah Taghabun, Surah Talaq, and then finally Surah Tahrim. And so all of these surahs are giving us guidance and lessons about what life was like in Medina Munawwar. And what are some lessons that we can apply from the situation of the Muslims and the Ummah, the personal life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his dealings with the people in Medina Munawwar that we can apply to ourselves, we can apply to our current context. So a couple of things, right? In Medina Munawwara, obviously the Muslims, they have their own masjid. In Medina Munawwara, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, okay, he gets remarried again, right? After the death of his mother, our mother Khadija radiallahu anha, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's enemies and his audience um, is different, right? He has the hypocrites and some of the antagonistic Jews in Medina Munawwara as opposed to the dominant enmity of the Quraysh in Makkah Mukarramah. And so all of these different uh, things uh, taking into context, right, help us to understand the verses of the Quran, right, from the perspective of them being Madani verses, them being revealed after the Hijrah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so Medina Munawwara is the first community of believers, right, in Arabia. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala revealed the Quran to them in order to teach them as well as in order to teach us. And so in this juz and in other places throughout the Quran, but very, very uniquely in this juz, because all of the surahs, one after another, they are all Madani surahs, okay, um, describe to us what took place, right, in the Medina and Sira of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, okay, giving us guidance and giving us lessons on, you know, what to do in these types of specific situations. So in Surah Mujahada, Mujadala, in the beginning of the Jews, Surah number 58, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes reference of the rulings related to zihar. The zihar, which was a practice in which a husband, right, through inappropriate language, right, says that he doesn't want to be with his wife anymore, right, by trying to insult her and disrespect her in a way. So the ruling of that, that a divorce would take place and that the husband would have to pay a kafara. So the details of those rulings of this practice regarding vihar, okay, it's something that took place, right, in the life of the Muslims, right, in Medina Munawwara, related to a sahabi named Khawla binti Tha'laba, radiallahu anha. Okay, the incident of her, um, you know, situation with her husband and their marriage is referred to in there. After that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in verses number 8 and verses number 14 of Surah Mujadala speaks about how there were a group of people from the Ahlul Kitab, from the Yahud, and also the hypocrites of Medina Munawwara who had, who had tried to deceive the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a way where they would twist the words that they would use. They would speak using language that can have double meaning. So, for example, instead of saying "Assalamu alaikum," they would say things like "Assam alaikum," "Assam alaikum" without the lam, 
And so when we pray, when we pronounce it, assalamu alaikum without the noun, the, the, the lam sound in it, it changes the meaning. It becomes death unto you instead of peace be unto you. Okay, and so how do we pick up on that and how do we respond to that? How do we deal with those types of people? Um, the etiquette and the adab of attending gatherings and accommodating people during gatherings. Like I try to make space, try not to, you know, crawl over people, try not to, you know, leap over people and sitting in a gathering, right? The proper etiquette and the adab of addressing the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Okay, um, how do we divide the spoils of war? What rights does the greater community? What rights does the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his family have with regards to the spoils of war after a campaign? Peace be Okay, um, the Jews also throws light on interrelationships and connections both within the community of Medina Munawara, the neighbors within one another, and also outside of the community, right? The relationships of the people of Makkah Mukarramah who had opposed Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There are certain people from among Makkah Mukarramah that were openly opposed. There were other people that were not openly opposed. How do we deal with them? Okay, that detail is given here as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also speaks about how some of the people of the book and some of the hypocrites, they had conspired together against the Muslims during the campaign of Banu Nadir. Okay, so Banu Nadir was one of the Jewish tribes in Medina Munawara. They were eventually expelled. And um, the people of the book, meaning referring to the Yahud and Medina Munawara and the hypocrites, right, they had conspired against the Muslims. So again, we can't separate the Sira from our understanding of the Quran. Nevertheless, right, that is referenced here as well in Surah Hasha. Um, in Surah Mumtahina, there is a discussion about the ruling of women taking the Pledge of Allegiance at the hand of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And, you know, how do we deal with those women who made Hijrah to Medina Munawwara alone in order to preserve their religion? What would we do about that? And Allah praises them and Allah praises those who have good conduct with them. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala also in Surah Saf, He tells the believers to be steadfast, right, in the aid and assistance of their faith. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how many of them, they uh, were able to stand united shoulder to shoulder behind the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So how to be steadfast, okay? Um, that's what this surah is speaking about. Um, in surah Jumu'ah, surah number 62, Okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refutes the claims to superiority that the people of the book have about how they are the chosen servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have, along with those claims, other baseless claims about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so the challenge that is given to them, if you really believe you're the chosen people, that you can do no wrong, that Allah can do no wrong to you, then wish for death. Right? Wish for death. Okay, if you are actually truthful and sincere in what it is that you say that you are worthy of, okay, then strive for it, seek death. But no, they want to live forever. So they're contradicting their practice. They're contradicting themselves. So that's what's mentioned in Surah Juma. In Surah Munafiqun, right? We have an entire surah dedicated to discredit the hypocrites. An entire surah, it's called Surah Munafiqun. It's an entire surah dedicated to discredit the hypocrites, refute them, call them out, reveal their inner states, right? Their secret coded language the ugliness of their heart and their character, as well as their attachment to wealth and to children and the temporary pleasures of this life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reprimands them harshly in this surah. After that, we get to surah Taghabun, in which there is a warning to the believers against imitating these types of evil attitudes, right? the evil characteristics of the hypocrites and others, okay, and becoming attached to these temporary pleasures and delights of this dunya. Okay, and as a result of this attachment, we are unaware and ignorant and fooled and deceived about the nature of this life, right? And we forget the nature of the next life, okay? And, you know, because we forget the nature of this life, the reality of what this life is all about, that it is temperate and temporary and transient, and the reality of the next life, which is that it is the significant existence and it's going to actually last forever, we forget about these two realities and therefore we forget our purpose in this life our purpose is to prepare for the akhirah our purpose is to worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our purpose is to do the dhikr and ibadah of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remembrance and worship of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right and get the result of that remembrance and worship in the hereafter so surah taghabun speaks about that 
Okay. Afterward, at the end of the Jews in Surah Talaq and Surah Tahrim, there is a detailed discussion of the legal rulings related to divorce, along with the questions of the waiting period after divorce, spending money, nursing children. Okay, this is accompanied by accounts that relate to uh, the women around the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, okay, and how he had dealt with some of the misunderstandings that took place within his family, right, within a number of his wives, okay. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, right, very strongly, right, gives us instruction that with regards to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, okay, we cannot, you know, demand so much from him. We cannot, you know, become people who try to divert his attention from the ultimate objective and from the ultimate purpose, which is to bring closer to the akhirah, not to bring people closer to the dunya. And so with regards to the dunya and matters of the dunya, right, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right, he shouldn't be burdened or pressured in that way with regards to matters of the dunya. Okay. And the danger of this type of attitude towards the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right, asking for more dunya or asking for more temporary things. Okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives two examples of women who are deserving of punishment in the hereafter. The wife of Lut alayhi salam and the wife of Nuh. Okay, as opposed to two women who are deserving of Jannah in the hereafter. The wife of Fir'aun, Asiya, and Maryam, the mother of Isa alayhi salatu was salam. Okay, that the two women who are deserving of punishment, their close relationship to two prophets of Allah would not help them in any regard. Why? Because they are people in the, of the dunya. Right? They are materialistic people. And contrasting that with the example of the wife of Fir'aun, Asiya, and the wife of, uh, sorry, and the mother of Isa alayhi salam, Maryam, that they are two people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought to salvation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them najat because of their sanctity and because of their worship. Right, so this word sanctity, right, is one of the meanings of the word tahrim. And so this is the end of Surah Tahrim, okay, Surah number uh, 66. And so in any case, okay, we make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted from us. Again, I encourage everyone to, trees, to, to please find a book of seerah that we can access. Find a book of seerah where we can learn about the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Find a book of seerah from beginning to end in whichever language there are so many authentic ones i can give my own recommendations inshallah but we cannot understand the quran without appreciating the biography and the life of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam a number of verses of the quran we will not be able to understand it or interpret them properly correctly accurately without understanding the context in which they were revealed and the context in which they were revealed it is the biography the seerah of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam and so I make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me and all of us the tawfiq to properly understand the Qur'an, to properly practice upon the Qur'an, to properly learn and teach the Qur'an, whatever is correct is from Allah, whatever is incorrect is from myself and shaitan. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. وَآخِرْ دَعْوَانَا أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ وَصَلَّ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ نَبِيِّنَا مُحَمَّدُ وَعَلَىٰ آلِهِ وَصْحَابِ أَجْمَعِينَ جزاكم الله خيرا والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.